All right, Brian's SCA here, measure twice, cut once. Now, in today's market, are you wondering why is new construction so expensive? What's driving up the cost? Well, today I'm gonna find out because I'm talking real estate, real estate, real estate. Who do I have here? Why are you here? And what value are you gonna add to this question? Well, uh, my name is Jim Eichenlaub. I am the executive director for the Builders Association of Metropolitan Pittsburgh. We're a nonprofit trade association of uh, folks pretty much that work in the built housing industry, building yep. and housing. So new construction, remodeling, uh, you know, the builders and models themselves, but all the folks that are involved apartments. Uh, in that pro in apartments, uh, our apartment association subsidiary, but uh, folks like yourself who are members, Brian, um, right. the real estate side. So we cover pretty much from, you know, acquisition of the land uh, to selling it to the consumer. Uh, obviously we work, our membership is um, the it, housing industry f people. Uh, folks, like I said, the builders or modelers and suppliers and so on. Um, 400 companies in Southwestern PA. Uh, one of the oldest associations of our type in the country, established in 1938. How long have you been there? I've been with the association for 26 years wow. in different capacities. Not 1938? Not 1938. <laughs> um, but. Uh, uh, started out as their government affairs uh, person and then became their executive director about 13 years ago. The, um, you know, obviously our industry, as you know, is uh, is, is highly regulated. Um, and so those members felt we needed to have uh, a voice uh, in the halls of government. Right. Um, but we educate our members on changes and codes and laws and so on, uh, networking opportunities for our members to get together and share information, those sort of things. That's what I wanted to touch on. I was going to add my two cents in being a member for three, maybe even four years now is the networking opportunities. There's all kind of different groups out there, wholesalers, realtors, they all have their different networking groups. This is a networking association um, that looks out for the best interest of the new construction community. So they have lobster and uh, uh, steak get togethers, clay pigeon shoots, uh, different seasonal events where if, you, if you're a window manufacturer, if you're a builder, if you're a flooring company, we all get together and talk and get to know each other's business and help each other's business out. Is that pretty much kind of? Uh, on the networking side, yeah. absolutely. And then you do um, governmental affairs, of course. We do government course. affairs, uh, we do education, um, provide di business discounts, uh, People don't under, uh, know this, but uh, we're actually uh, as a as an industry segment, uh, construction. Uh, we have probably the, the most s small businesses that are involved in engaging, yeah. which means less than fifty employees of these companies. So, oh yeah, um, when you build a home. Uh, you may have 25, 30 different companies involved in some totally. component of that. So um, that's also why home construction and construction is always one of those economic indicators of saying, you know, is our economy healthy um, or is it hurting? Right. So that when we had the housing bubble in 2009, obviously the caught when it went in the financing issues, um, when it went south, then our economy certainly yep. suffered. So yep. um, it's a it's a huge component. But but as a result of those small companies, we can band together all those companies and do things like health insurance and workers awesome. comp and, and 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 group business discounts that yep. that benefit them that that they may not be able to obtain individually, but as a collective of the whole of the association, we can supply those and, and work on their behalf to get uh, <coughs> opportunities to for for business savings. Amazing. So if you're a builder or any type of new construction vendor, if you're not part of BAMP, at least look at their website, come to a networking event. Mm -hmm. I'm sure we can get you in for free. Um, I'll sponsor you, et cetera. And we'll see if it's for you. Yeah. So we're going to just went out just real, real quick. Yeah. Check us out at uh, uh, www.pghhomebuilders.com plural.com pghhomebuilders.com uh information on there too and just get a little better understanding but uh that's not what we're here for today yeah. we're here to talk about 
why housing is uh, why people are saying, oh my God, why does it cost so much to for, for me to buy a new home? Totally understand. And let's get right into it because we've got a couple bullet points. We've got limited time. We could talk for about eight hours on yes. this. So Each first subject. thing, first thing you, you brought up, which I love is land available, land availability and the cost to develop the site. Um, yeah. So let's let's dive into that. Um, you know, obviously the cost of the home is oftentimes attributable to the cost of the lot. There's what? a factor often for right. financing. You can do, explain that probably better than I can. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Um, but um, land is is harder and harder to get, yes. and and the land that is developable um, is oftentimes you know further and further away from our city core. Yes. Now. Um, you know, and, and the cost of do developing the land uh, is is you know has factors like am I using what's called a greenfield? Is a, is it a piece of former farmland or right. an old golf or course enclosed up? Or brownfield's more expensive, frankly, yeah. because you've got to tear down all the old stuff and Ugh. dig out all the infrastructure, right. and you basically wipe that slate clean yep. to do what you need to do. So people don't you know say, well, why aren't we rebuilding in the urban core? Well, well to be honest with you, that can that's more expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so those factors of, and then of course the, the key then is to find a piece of land that is developable. And oftentimes people say, well, I've got a hundred acres, um, but a hundred acres may be a portion of it is hill and valley. <laughs> um, you know, half of it's a, is a, is, is a wetland or steep slopes. And in Western Pennsylvania, we all know that. Um, so I, I, a long time ago, a developer said, you know, and we don't want to rape the land and, you know, take a, you know, and, level it completely off and so on um there's this and underlying issues you know minds minds sure. and and all of those factors so um and then of course the a willingness and ability to to sell the land or, right. uh, by the, the by the current owner and so on so the first piece is finding a piece of land right. that you can develop and that um the development will cover all the costs associated with that let's, let's pause, hit the pause button real quick so you understand development, I understand development, but for those people that have no idea what development means, what does develop the land physically mean? What does okay. that mean? Well, uh, after, I after we acquire the land, right. we then have to prepare it for the home sites, Beautiful. which means we have to change some of the contours of the land. Right. Um, we have to be able to, uh, so that's the clearing and grading. Um, so what, you what you don't understand is, you if, if you're a buyer and you come to a, um, community that it has all these roads kind of cut in it didn't start like that no and all of those costs <laughs> yeah they are born you know the government doesn't do that <laughs> you don't um, wave a wand yeah, no, like yeah, yeah in the city they do some maybe in redevelopment or they'll yeah. bring money to the table right. because of the cost but um in in your typical suburban development um all of those costs are borne by the developer so the grading the putting in of the water, the sewer, the electric, the cable, all the underground utilities, um, the roads, if there's sidewalks that are mandated, um, all of those things um, are done by the developer with the oversight and approval of the government who will then ultimately take it over um, and uh, preparing the site. So there's a lot of, of time in going through all those approvals and then uh, so the planning process, the approval process. Uh, by the local what, municipality. By the local municipality. So that's called the subdivision right. approval process. All right, so if you watch my pros and cons videos, buyers, you know it's a pretty good option in this crazy market market to buy something brand new, either it's already being built, that's already built, brand new construction, or something you can get on early. You pick your finishes, etc. You want to contact the Brian Sells brand no matter where you're at. If you're in the Pittsburgh market, if you're in the Southeast Florida market, I don't care if you're over in Wisconsin. I've got spider webs of colleagues just like me across the United States and Canada so I can refer you to somebody that can meet your needs. If you are a buyer that is struggling to get a house, contact the Brian Sells brand now. Then the developer um, puts those improvements in and some of those improvements may be kept by the development under the guides of a home uh, owners association or those improvements are turned over to uh, the various government or utilities that would then take it over so need obviously the gas would be turned over to the local gas company all oh, right you know the, the water lines would be you know taken over by you know either and so those improvements have to be built in accordance with their specifications that they'll be willing to accept them the, um, the, the local municipality or the actual gas electric and all water? of them 
All of them. All right. So, so there's a lot of planning. A lot of planning, a moved. lot of approvals um, and understanding of what they want, what they require. So the roads, you know, you have to put the grades in there. So the curves or, the, or the, those sort of things right. have to be under the, you know, ah. the um, then, of course, you build the road. So everything from the, you know, the under, uh, you know, the, the subsurface or the, you know, the gravel. Right. And then you have to put the asphalt in and so on. Some towns may require um, no curbs. Some may require asphalt curbs. Some may require concrete curbs. Jeez. Some towns require uh, no sidewalks. Some on one side or the other. Um, <laughs> both. You have uh, then the newest, hottest is, is storm water. You know right. how do we collect the rainwater? Um, the, a requirement is that we can't put the the amount of water off of that site as it you, know, you have to treat it as if it was what was there before pristine ah. you know, grassland so we have to so when you drive by and say what is that big huge hole in, yeah. you know or that big you know retention. Well, that's called a retention pond that yeah. holds the storm water back and then lets it go off the site at a regulated rate and then recently they've said okay but also in addition to that we're going to require some of that water to remain on the site, um, either through so now town uh, communities are requiring you to put in a sump or some oh, sort of a holding facility to allow that water to slowly leach out, right. um, or uh, you know, and then of course we have to deal with streams and we have to oh, yeah. the, the, uh, all of those things. So all of that goes into that, and then of course they figure out it's all money, yeah, and then it's adding they, up. It all adds up, you know, just keep on going up. And the developer is the one paying the for developers this. pay for that. And then the developer then says, OK, those costs yep. are X divided by the number of unit lots that lots. I divided by. Right. And that can come. And, and of course, they factor in a profit margin. Right. Developers aren't doing this for free. Well, of course, they're, they're in business. That's yeah, what they do. Um, but, uh, you know, and, and, and so that and, and they have to come up with their financing. So, so the developer is the owner of the land. Or yes, could be, could or, be. or could be. It could be someone. It, there could be a partner. So right, maybe um, a guy owns a farm and says, "I don't know about development, yeah, but I don't but, want to." But I want to. I want to be a partner. I want to. Right. I want to. I want to. I want to make. I want to share the profit. Right. Um. Or um. Sometimes a a a larger builder will come in, a Heartland or, yeah. or, or you know, or Ryan or some of those folks, and they will say, okay, you know, they actually may find the property yep. and then go to a developer and say, okay, we're in the home building, but we want you to build these lots for us and create these oh, lots yeah. for yep. us. So they're partners. And we, and as part of the financing, they then say, okay, and we're going to, to, you know, build so many houses at a certain time frame in order that you will get your money to pay your financing because that's called development financing. Mm -hmm. That's different than the home construction. And that is really changed in 2009 with the housing bubble. Okay. Um, the financing of developments and the, and you know, the, the bank regulations of, of how quickly that money is paid back uh, impacts you know that um you know that process as well let's fast forward a little bit um so then the developer develops all that and then a builder comes in and they sell the developer sells it all to the builder that lot at a cost for so, that basically which would include which re reflects the cost of the development yeah so basically the developer preps the land and then the says builder come on and build your houses and everything is permitted approved and everything else so how is the development process that we just described how has that cost gone up in today's? Oh, uh, well, uh, what's driving that cost up? Gasoline regulation a lot. So and the then, government. Uh, so the government regulations. I mentioned the the stormwater issue. Yeah. Um, you know what they require in those developments um, drives up the cost of that. So obviously, the cost of the land is driving it up. It's right. Sellers. Demand. You know, if there's not a supply, then you know obviously the sellers will be able to offer require more per acre. Um, the other aspect of that, and so the whole development, it's the longer I have to, it takes me to get my approvals and put the the improvements in the ground um could take up you know literally take years yeah and so you know there's financing and, and, and so on so those those issues come in the you know just as home buyers are impacted by higher interest rates so too are developers when they are doing their and, piece and of it most will finance most don't pay oh absolutely yeah okay. there's some there's a combination but again it has to make sense to the bank too right um so all of those things come into play and in, in factor and then as you mentioned uh, you know a big issue is um Petroleum, um, you know, the asphalt is you know very uh -huh. heavy. 
right. petroleum product. Um, the uh, uh, plastic that we put in for the water and sewer lines have, you know, a, a petroleum a fossil fuel component. So those costs also. Um, and then, of course, labor is another issue. The shortage of skilled yeah. labor is, and not only in the development side, but in the um, in, in the construction side as well. But finding, you know, labor um, that is uh, skilled and, you know, is, is, is trained and capable to do that. So, um, you know, that can stretch out the development because, you know, there's so many people that can do that and, and, and so on. So what type of companies, so basically everything in the development process from a moving earth, cutting trees down, moving earth, installing plumbing, electric, sewer, all those costs have gone up. Oh, absolutely. To, to the cost of the material and that drives all and so that is your basis of what the cost of the lot is right exactly okay and right. now and then we're gonna get there's a calculation yes and then there's the fun part of building the house which is another <laughs> oh, yeah, another you know, oh yeah so but people say what well, you know so um you know and 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 again we talk about government regulations you go back down you, you go to zoning so the the municipal. What's the difference between zoning and planning again for okay. those people? Well, they're 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 intermingled. They're right. all part of the land development process. But but as the town zones their communities, they determine um, the size of lots um, in a certain area. So some places I may be able to build townhouses, which is a t bigger density, mm -hmm. um, versus um, you know a community that requires one acre lots. I'm obviously going to have a lesser yield, so those lots are sure. going to be more expensive. All right, you are a developer. Developer, you're a builder, you're a flipper, you know, you just don't know what agent to hire. You want to hire the Brian Sells brand. Why is that? Because just like this Measure Twice Cut Once podcast that is specific to new construction, I have a buyer client list that is looking for a flip, uh, is looking to build a brand new house with a two car garage, or looking for a luxury manse. They're going to be watching this podcast. So I have those buyers. It makes sense to hire the Brian Sells brand to list your properties. You want to get me in super early. I like to be in in the very beginning so I can help point you to what buyers want. And another perk that a lot of my flippers, developers, and builders absolutely love is I do all the social media for them. The Lawrence fell offs, I'm doing the social media there. You could pay a company to thousands of dollars to do social media. They don't know real estate. They're not on site. They just don't get it. I have experience since 2007 doing this i will be automatically doing my social media and by default your social media gets done too so if you're a builder developer or flipper in the southeast florida market or the pittsburgh pennsylvania market contact the brian sells brand now and then, of course, we have what are called mixed-use developments, which is a combination of single-family homes, townhouses, maybe right. some some quads, you know, those sort yeah. of things. Um, so that's all based on what the zoning or the local government says. Okay, that's the kind of development or residential community we want in this section of our town. Interesting, and it varies from parts of the town to uh, community to community. Oh, wow. How would a municipality, and why would they care whether it's townhouses, condos, mixed use? What what makes them make that decision? Well, there's a lot of things. It's 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 the density of the community. It's um, uh, you know, you, you, there are laws that say you can't have one type of you know, just like you can't zone out strip joints <laughs> or whatever you know commercial right, right, right. side or whatever so you know they 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 the community uh, you know of course there are some towns that have no zoning so that's a whole nother really? mixed bag but you know so it's not required but most of our communities especially in the core uh, area of development around the you know in our region has zoning right. uh, a zoning component but um if you do then um you know the community has a planning process that is guide uh, guided by uh, Pennsylvania legislature legislation called the Municipalities Planning Code, mm -hmm. um, and that allows you then to you know how you um, do what's called a comprehensive plan or how you do your community development. And then there's of course some towns like Cranberry and others who have added fees, so um, they 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 have what's called a transportation impact fee. Which is a fee paid by the lot developer or per lot for um, the impact of that development can have on transportation. So, but there's wow. the, in Pennsylvania, there's only two types of uh, other than tapping fees for water and sewer and so on. But um, you can do a transportation impact fee and a recreational impact fee. So, as the community grows, they can charge a fee and then they 
create a fund with a plan that's that's very structured very cool. um, that they have to say okay we're going to use that money that we've gotten from this these developers and we're going to now build a park we're going to develop that park or acquire oh, the land cool. so so that as the, the as the community grows so too does your you know the amenities and obviously um you know one of you know we, we, a lot of developers, um, as we go through this process, they come up against people who are, who are often referred to as NIMBYs, which means not in my backyard. I liked that farm. I want to keep it a farm. You know, I don't want it to be, a, you know, I don't want it, so, you know, so, um, but as we know that obviously as those, in, you know, those communities impact the governments, yep. um, they, um, you know, in, in Cranberries instance, and a few other Pine Township others, they say, okay, the, when we get to a certain level, we know we're going to need a stoplight at this intersection. And so we're going to yeah. have that, and we have to pay for that. And we have to, you know, make offsite improvements to our community so that we can handle that growth. That's, that's, and that's smart growth in, 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 a, in a structured and planned way. The developer knows up front what's going to happen and what they're going to expect. The incoming community knows. You know what they're responsible for what the community itself is going to add to that as well so all of those again those are fees that are added to the cost of the land and, and, out of the lot and i've heard of um municipalities saying to the developer that they had to pay, pay for it, not absolutely put in, yeah right they had to put they have to put money up front so you know um Something. we uh, uh, there is a process that there as i mentioned that it's supposed to be done right but then we also know that communities try to take it in a different way and sure. they kind of do some arm twisting and say well we really like to approve this but we don't have to so you know but if you give us you know a hundred thousand dollars to help this you know or improve this road that gets to your plan that would make it a little easier for us to, sure. to, to approve it because they have to approve it you just the developer just can't go in and start right moving the dirt and, and putting the infrastructure in the, the, the community has to approve it yeah. um, through that zoning and, and, and planning approval process so um, and there's a whole you know public comment period you know, goes to the planning commission and then the you know the supervisors right. or the borough council or whomever you know it falls under so there's it's a long drawn out process yeah and the interesting part was if you're a developer and it's eventually you're gonna be a first-time developer you're not gonna know the total cost until you get into it because I had a developer yeah. that tried developing land years ago, I mean, maybe 10 years ago, and he had all this money spent and all this, and then they hit him with, you need to put a traffic light in because you're increasing the traffic yeah. so much. And he, he folded. He was like, I yeah, well, that, that should have been up front. I don't know, oh, I don't know the been. circumstances, but they shouldn't have just here. been able to walk in and said, you know, and again, people are like, you know, we call a lot of, we get a lot of calls from someone that I own this land and I want to be, you know, right. the first thing I always <laughs> tell them is, you know, you need to partner with a developer who does this. You know, right. that's not to say that in your selling of the land, you become a, you know, a, a partner. In it. But you don't ask a butcher to do heart surgery Absolutely. and you don't do, you know, I mean, so, you know, developers know what they're doing, um, what the process is. So, you know, and, and those who don't do it um, or don't know how to do it usually end up, you know, getting whacked or uh, getting, um, you know, uh, you know, over their head and, and you don't know what you don't know. It, you don't it, even know yeah. what questions. And, and it, 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 it's a very complicated business. You can't wing it. And so, um, you know, rely on the experts to do that piece so the same thing as always you know people like to build their own home and, and certainly you know that's within but in today's you know environment um, with building codes and everything else um, it's best left to again an expert who knows what they're doing and knows where those hidden um, issues are and anyone who's done any remodeling you know or done some home improvements knows that you know uh, uh, my my wife always teases me and, and says, "Okay, how many tool project is this? How many more tools am I going to have to buy? <laughs> I love that. You know, uh, it's how, how many more tools are you going to have to buy to, to to do this job? Yeah. So, um, you know, uh, you know, it, 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 it's it's really best left to the experts. hundred uh, percent. Just like just like selling your own home. Yeah. You know, Say it all who's, the time. Who's better to sell than someone like you, Brian, who knows what the heck you're doing? Yeah, funny you say that. I mean, we're taught to tell for some by owners and all that. I mean, you, you, uh, you wouldn't want to have a uh, heart surgeon their first day on the market slicing you open. Uh, lawyers don't usually represent themselves. Yeah. They get somebody else yeah. to represent them. And, and that's so critical. And one of the things we do for our consumers, um, in addition to like our festival homes, so, but we, there's a lot of consumer information out there. Of, you know, and I, I had a, a woman the other day reach out to me that uh, she had paid uh, almost $8,000 for a deck 
that hadn't been installed. She's cut two checks. I'm like, stop. Mm. You know, you don't do this. You know, there are laws that say how much they can take up front and the process that's involved in it. So the podcast that you're watching has been taken off and is finally growing in leaps and bounds. So I'm now opening up a sponsorship. Why would you want to sponsor? Well, because you are a drywall supplier. You are a quartz countertop supplier. You are a builder, right? You want to get your name, your product out in front of a specific target market audience. Guess what? This Measure Twice Cut Once podcast you're watching, it specifies to vendors just like you that need your product. So I'm opening up sponsorships. Feel free to contact me in any platform. The sponsorship cost is minimal compared to what you're paying if you're paying for TV commercials, Google ads, etc. And it's going to get you a much more specific audience. So contact me now for sponsorship opportunities. Measure twice, cut once podcast. You know, so and and and, and doing your homework um, is so critical. Oh my god! You know, god. And, and, and not all, and not all home builders are the same. No doubt you about know, it. My members, well, I, you know, uh, uh, you know, we unfortunately we can't recommend a particular you know builder, um, but you know, it's always important to do their homework in, in remodeling or new construction. Right. Find out, you know, hey, are they, you know, how are they done? You know, look at their homes, look at their models, talk. Lock on a neighbor and say, hey, how responsible is it? Did you buy this house from the builder? You know, how were they in responding? Because, you know, there's always callback. There's always something that may need to be tweaked. Sure. Um, those sort of things. There's no so. perfect house out of the gate. I have 1 million, 10 million, 200,000. There's they, they too many settling. components that have issues. Right. So, um, you know, and that's not, you know, I mean, it, exactly. You have to, you know, do a little bit of tweaking here and there and so on. But, um, you know, it's it's important to do your homework up front. Due diligence should be done on anything. Doctors, yes, on lawyers, anything. Builders, yeah. realtors, yeah. Yeah. whatever. Just like when you buy a sweater, you know. <laughs> Same thing, you know. Is You're doing what, due what, diligence on yeah. a sweater. Well, no, but you know, is the quality of the yeah is the quality of the product. You know, uh, you, you may pay a little more for right. it. That's the other thing I always tell people is that, you know it's always not best to to, to go with your lowest bidder. <laughs> Anything you want to add that we haven't touched yeah. on? Well, let's, let's just real quickly, and there's so many factors yep. um, that are, are impacting our affordability. We can get into labor and, and so on. And the, of course, interest rates, as, as interest rates okay. go up, fewer and fewer people can can buy the home. But, sure. but um, building codes are, are an absolutely, um, it, it, that is probably one of the biggest um, factors in today's um, cost of How is that driving up costs? Um, well, friends, uh, Let's go back to 2009 when uh, the building code was going to require that every single home, single family home, had to install a fire sprinkler. Uh, oh, that was going to be I about that. that was going to be a ten thousand dollar nut. Yeah, and we said, wait a minute, you know, our codes have evolved from you know, you used to put a you know, smoke detector on each level and they were battery back. Mm -hmm. And then uh, code changed and said, mm -hmm. okay, we want them in every floor, but they have to be interconnected. So when one goes off, they all go off. And they said, well, that's not enough. We want them in the halls and we want them in the bedrooms, you know, so that. So, and, and, and of course, at the same time, electrical wiring is improving and, and homes are right. clearly better today than the old knob and tube oh, wiring. Right, yeah. And that's why you, you don't hear too many ho new homes catch on. Right. So, but, but the... It, the mandate at the time in, in 2009 was that we were going to put fire sprinklers in. And uh, we went to the list and said, well, wait a minute. Now, you know, th that really should be a consumer choice. That's the next step beyond the, the basic, you know, security of, uh, and safety of the alarms go off, you get out of the house, the fire, you know, whatever. Um, and, and, and sprinklers, obviously, you know, the concern was the damage they can cause, the, the, the malfunctioning they can cause. And, and obviously um, there's a cost to component with that. And that was going to be about ten to $15,000. Yeah. Now, um, they, they felt, did something for that. Well, they did. The, the legislature saw that and said, okay, well, in single family homes, we're going to let consumers make that decision. So in the buying process, they have to say, yeah, I want sprinklers and I know what my cost is and I'm, right. I want them in. Or I don't want sprinklers and I sign a waiver and say, I don't want sprinklers. But that was only for single family detached. Right. The, the legislature said, okay, but... You know, we don't want to go that far. If the code officials think that, you know, sprinklers are, are good, especially in townhouses and where their homes are attached so that the unit goes off and, you know, we want those in there. <clears throat> so we, so now in all new townhouses and, yep. and we're, we're putting sprinklers in. Even <clears throat> even row houses that are more sure. than two, I think, attached? Yeah, anything that's more than two. Right, because right. yeah. I see a lot of builders and yeah. I'm representing a lot of them, yeah. they're doing 
two, <coughs> two, yeah. two. Yeah. Because they wouldn't incur that cost. Well, that, yeah. And then, so that's, that was one. Uh, the biggest thing that's happening today in today's codes, aside from, you know, um, you know, some of them are outraged and it's a long process. The code is updated every three years, but the big one uh, that we're seeing um, a lot of uh, uh, changes and in, in increasing in cost is in the energy uh, mm. uh, efficiency, the energy right. uh, conservation costs. Um, we're not like California and Massachusetts where the home has to have zero yeah. Uh, yeah, emissions and, and, and can't use gas, <laughs> uh, but um, it's 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 very expensive. So um, and there's a there's a te there's additional testing that has to be done. But but the homes are becoming so tight now, and so therefore it's almost impossible you know, to um, it, it use the old pink insulation. So right. you're using foam insulation. Well, that's more expensive. Um, you know, it in some instances you can't build with a two by four anymore. You have to build with two by six lumber in order to put the amount of insulation, oh, insulation yeah. in the walls. So obviously that would that lumber is going to cost, and our lumber costs are crazy anyway. Right. But um, uh, we're now at a point where um, the homes are so tight that we're actually having to put in a mechanical system to bring fresh air back into the house. Wow. Where you know where the homes will draft you, but, right. but we're actually artificially bringing fresh air back into the house to circulate air because we we've, we've gone so far on the tightness of the homes right. that um, we you know the, the, the homes are becoming stale in air, so we have to circulate new fresh air wow. into the components. So um, this our our our. our Pennsylvania adopted a new code in February of this year, and uh, it's a and, and those challenges of what's called the air exchange area is, is, is going to be a really is a challenge for our builders to achieve those scales, um, and so um, it, it takes a little slower to build it to make sure that you're sealing the house tight, and um, uh, you know making sure that you meet those because throughout the whole process there is our inspections sure the, the municipality yeah you have the to pass permit, before you go to the next one then you have to go to the next one so um there's there's a whole you know that when i started out the building code for residential was this big <laughs> today it's this big okay so how much of it is actually irrelevant because well mean, it's put all of its costs all of its costs um but that's the thing so our, our building code isn't it used to be called this is the minimum basic then of course the consumers say hey i want you know other things or i want more you know i want to go beyond this but um electrical wiring the types of plugs we're using yep. uh are 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 are, 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 are you know arc faults and and so on so yeah. those are more costly Breakers than your standards you're more than your standard plugs yeah so all of those things start to add up so the, the late assessment is about 25 to thirty thousand dollars into the home is now with this new code so i mean i gotta tell you what my biggest takeaways when i first came into the podcast i'm thinking oh you know costs are going up we hate it and blah blah but after talking to you i, I I'm kind of comfortable with costs going up because you're getting something for it. In some instances, but the return, for instance, the energy, the return of the investment on what's cost there the is, is, is is very little back I to the I guess I'm consumers. looking at as a buyer. As a buyer, yeah. I well, the feel, buyer, that's what I'm saying, I'm for the buyer. I'm paying more, but I'm You're getting. paying more, but, you're, but the energy efficient, the return of the cost is nominal. Right. Um, you know, it's, it, which is why, like for on electrical cars, they're giving you tax credits right. to get you to do that. But, um, you know, or if you put a sun, I mean, a, Solar panel. Solar panel on right. or so on. But the, the cost, the, the, the return of the lower elect energy, your gas bill yeah. is not covering the cost of okay. the upfront. And so, um, and that's the challenge with green building. You know, a lot of people say, I want to build a green home. I want thermo, you know, and thermo, uh, you know, heat in order. But when they start looking at the cost and the return, right. their green building changes from the cost, uh, the green in the house to the green in the, in, in the Benjamins. <laughs> and so they say, well, maybe I'm not as green as I wanted to be yeah. because the cost and, 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 and the value, the assessed value, the market value of the home is not nominally impacted by that as well. A lot of these aren't, you know, we're not, you know, things that, as you know, right. you know, number of bedrooms or the type of a kitchen. Those are things that really impact the cost of uh, schools and so on. Yeah, but, value. but the, the value of the home, a lot of these things that we're putting behind the, the wall, wall, so to speak, are not, you yeah. know, really, um, you know, seen in the value other than the cost, of course, the, the cost of home and the resale value of it. Would you say that the true false green building has not really caught on in Pennsylvania? Um, Pennsylvania? Yeah, I would say that's that's 
true. You know, the energy, if people are buying the energy, you know, and again, we used to have what was called Energy Star, and we've gone so far beyond Energy Star mm -hmm. uh, with this code now. So we're become, we're, we're actually moving from, like I said, the code's becoming um, more of a utopian code than a minimum standard. You know, if someone wants that high energy efficiency, then they, they, they know what it's coming for. But because people weren't voluntarily doing it, um, the manufacturers, frankly, of those products got to the code developers yeah. and said, we'll mandate it. And so therefore, you know, they the consumers won't have choice anymore on that. And that's a huge, you yeah. know, issue. That, that's really the only way they're going to make green building ever take off because no one's going to. Well, that's no, why no California is, is, is and they have zero energy. Home. In fact, they want to build your home. So you're actually generating energy back into the grid, yeah. um, you know, and, and again, eliminating fossil fuels as a, as a, as an alternative energy, as an alter, as an energy source right. to take, you know, to fuel the home. I, mean, I don't think that'll happen here in Western Pennsylvania yeah. with the number of gas folks we have, but, but, um, it is, um, it, it's a challenge. So, uh, and that's what we do as an association is we talk to those code development companies and that process. Um, if that doesn't work, sometimes we have to go back to the legislature, but, uh, and, uh, you know, that, that code covers everything from from the stair geometry to um, the number uh, we're now uh, as we build the frame of the house um, this it, a company called Simpson strong ties um, is a company that builds these wire or metal straps that, right. in addition to nailing or screwing we're putting these you know binders. and and and, uh, and, and in a place like a, in hurricane prone Florida yeah. you need to do that so the roof doesn't blow off right but you know we're changing so but they've also included that in western Pennsylvania because really? of our tornado activity so but earthquakes you know in other places they have to design the footer and the connection uh, the, the foundation to the structure with you know so that right. you know stronger for, for sure so there's a different so there's roof loads for snow there's different things Makes like sense. that um so there is some maps or considerations into that but um more and more of those requirements are trickling into the code in and of itself so those product supply manufacturers can just you know sit back and take orders for all their things that they're selling. Do you have anything yeah. else you want to add before? No, I think up? we probably want to get together and talk a little bit more about it. Um, there's a lot of issues, obviously, that impact, uh, you know, the housing costs. But, um, you know, again, take a look at our website. Um, you know, our association is our, our, our you know, our, our proud members. They, they are professionals. That's why they're members of a professional organization. Yep. That's important. Um, so there's you know, something the, on the news now where there's some sort of um, contractor in the area getting sued because he took the money and never did the work. Yep. You're not going to find that. Yeah. In, in, well, and that was like the woman with the deck. She asked yeah. me that and I said, well, and she showed me the contract. It wasn't even close to being a contract. Now, on, on res, you know, right. on, on, on remodeling, you can file your complaint with the Attorney General's uh, Bureau of Consumer Protection. But there are, you know, again, there's information on our website about that yeah. um, related to, um, you know, making sure that the contract is correct correct what can they ask to up front what can you we, you know what can you um expect you know they you know, ch make sure uh you have written change orders so that you're not caught um you know off guard when you said well i didn't know it was going to cost that much right. to add that closet yeah you know those sort of things and that's in in, in new construction and remind you know, if you're in the middle of the job and you say well you know and could you do that? And the builder says, yeah, well, okay. Make sure you say, how much is it? Absolutely. You know, how much is this an add on to the, the you know, and, and, and get it in writing. Yeah. Um, that's absolutely, absolutely critical. Um, you know, our, for our members, I'll say the best consumer is a, edu is a smart consumer. Or one that asks a lot yeah. of questions. Now, don't go in there in the middle while they're nailing and doing stuff and, and get in their way. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I mean, it's important to have a good relationship with your contractor as you're building that home. Now, that's obviously different if you're buying a model or a home right. that's already been built. Right. You know, then you, you know, do your homework on, you know, how was that home built and, and, and so on. But, um, you know, it's, it's important to be a partner in the process, but let the professionals do their job at the yeah, same time. Due diligence, make sure you select the right professional. If you're unsure, I mean, 
reach out to the Builders yeah. Association. Yeah. They can provide some, they can't recommend yeah. anybody, but they can provide get, information. Get cost comparisons. Yeah. Now, again, you know, some plans, uh, as you know, you know, that's the only, if you want to be in that plan, that's the builder. Yeah. You know, you yeah. don't have a choice. Right. The, again, I, I mentioned about the 2009, you know, the dates where, you know, there's a development and multiple builders are they out there on in one development. Those are rare. Um, you know, it does happen. I know of one, yeah. one plan, yeah, it, but it's rare. It is rare. Um, so then if you're, you know, th then you're out searching for a specific lot. And again, people like yourself, Brian, who have your finger on the pulse of where those lots might be, um, that's who they should contact yeah. and, and work with you. Contact me if you have any questions about new construction, obviously. Um, if you're a vendor, I can't, I can't, I've been saying it to all my friends that are builders, contractors, you need to get involved with the Builders Association Metropolitan Pittsburgh. Huge advantage to your business, and it's going to give you the, an, an extra step of credibility that in today's uh, society just goes uh, a long way. So, Jim, Thank I you, know you're a busy man. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Appreciate right, it. Take care. You got it. See you soon.